Hey everybody, and welcome back to the next part in my Creating a Great Tone series for the Line 6 Helix. Today I want to talk about a little bit of a different topic that was actually sparked by um, a couple comments I got um, in a few different places um, concerning the last two videos I did here. Uh, one of them was, was about um, setting up a preset to be able to send um, a fully affected speaker emulated preset out to front of house while at the same time maybe monitoring on stage through a separate power amp and real guitar cabinet. And the other video was where I was talking about wet dry wet setups, okay? Now as I mentioned in both those videos, the Helix is really amazing in the sense that <clears throat> we have the ability to oftentimes handle the same situation in numerous ways. There isn't just always one scenario or one situation where it's like, okay, this is the only way we can do it. Sometimes it is, but a lot of times there's, there's multiple ways to do it. So it was interesting because I had a few comments where people said, well, why didn't you just do the wet dry wet using a send? Or why didn't you just uh, send the front of house um, uh, with the XLR and uh, use a send on the uh, real guitar cab when we're just trying to split the signal? And all very, very valid points. But there are reasons sometimes why we would maybe want to do that or not. So this is going to be about alternate use of our physical send outputs on our Helix or on our Helix LT. And ways that we can use that um, that maybe we wouldn't have originally thought of. A lot of times we think of sends and returns as simply like, well, that's going to be an effects loop type of thing where if I want to add another pedal into the path, I can use them for that purpose. But they can also be used as other outputs, okay? So I thought it would be really interesting to go back and revisit the previous two videos I did and give some alternate ways of doing that since so many folks brought it up. And also talk about a few of the reasons why I may have done it the way I did in the first place, okay? So let's dive in and look at wet, dry, wet first. Let's go over to HX Edit. So what I had here to start with as I had two wet dry wet scenarios okay wet dry wet one what I did is I set up path 1 a and B and also path 2 a okay sorry this is for some reason got set uh, set wrong um, I set path 2 a <clears throat> to be my wet sound okay um, which would possibly be feeding let's say two uh, FRFR monitors or a stereo FRFR, uh, maybe two power cabs, let's say. Let's just use that. Or, or a stereo Mission Gemini too, right? Um, whatever our choices of monitoring solutions. So, so basically what happens in this scenario is our guitar signal would come in and I have an amp model up here, Brit Plexi jump through a 412 greenback, and then all my wet effects that, that we had put on here. And we would send that out, let's say, to XLR. Right, because that's how we're connected to our stereo power cabs, let's say, or possibly we're using uh, Line 6 Link or, or some other way. That's, that's irrelevant right now, but we're gonna choose XLR for now. And then our bottom path here, path 2B, was set up with, I just put a wah on it just to kind of place hold, right? That maybe on our dry amp, we would maybe want a little bit of wah or something. We want that on our dry versus our wet. So whatever, right? that, that, that's not important. But our signal is now also coming into 2B at the same time and going through this path with basically nothing on it and we would send that to let's say our quarter inch output with our which is going to feed a real guitar amp head and cabinet let's say right that's going to be our dry we want it we have this beautiful tube amp we love so much that's my dry sound I'm going to use my two uh, power cabs as my wet right so this is this works beautifully this is this is fine this is one way to do it right um, I would have to send my, I'll go into my global settings on my Helix and set the quarter inch out to be an instrument output, right? So that the guitar amp is getting the signal that it wants. It's not expecting to see a line level. So we would want to set that to instrument, right? So that's one way that I did it. I'll talk about the alternative in a second, okay? This works beautifully, works fine. There's no problem with this. Now, Wet Dry Wet 2 was a different scenario, slightly different. Nothing changed up here on path 1A and B or on path 2B. That was still my wet, right? And again, we could send this to our, you know, uh, make-believe power cabs that we have outside there. And uh, the second path 2B, I had a guitar amp on it as well. So this would be the scenario if I wasn't feeding a real guitar amp anymore in the middle for my dry, but rather maybe we have three power cabs now, right? Nice, nice scenario to have. So we have a left and right, which are taking care of our wet, and we have the center, which is gonna be dry, right? Uh, and this could be any, I'm just using the power cab as an example. It could be any FRFR speakers, right? 
So we put an amp model on this so that our dry is still going to have some sort of an amp model. The thing I liked about this is it gave me the ability to easily use different amp models, one for my dry, different settings, right? And one for my wet, which may or may not be desirable. It's really personal preference. I'm not even trying to claim that this is right or wrong or the only way to do it, or it, maybe somebody wants just one guitar amp. But that was one positive to doing it this way. So those are the two scenarios. Now I had a lot of folks say, well, that's overly complicated because you could have just used a send, one of the physical send outputs. And I'll get to that in a second on what I have over here, which is wet, dry, wet three. One of the reasons I did this is because I really always have in my mind studio playing as well, right? Now with the Helix, being able to be used as an audio interface. In this scenario here, let's say I, say I set up this beautiful wet dry wet that I really like and I, I, I use it for live, but I also want to use it in the studio and come mix time, I want to be able to balance the levels between my dry and my, my wet. So the beautiful thing about this is when it's set up like this, I could just come in and say, okay, I'm going to set my output block on my wet affected sounds to USB 3, 4 and my dry to USB 1, 2. Now I have a way to go right into, I use my, my DAW of choice is Cubase and I could assign two stereo tracks uh, or in this case I could go one mono because the, the direct signal is just going to be mono, it's just guitar, dry guitar. And I could have uh, print my, my dry guitar and my effects and then later on I'm not committed to anything, I could balance how much of each I wanted. Nice scenario to have, right? I mean also in the Helix we have USB 7 which is always taking just a totally bone dry um, uh, guitar signal so that we could reamp later and that's another way to do it. You see there's so many options here but this is one way or one reason I was thinking that. Now so we come over to wet dry wet 3 and we say okay this looks like a much simpler uh, little patch here. Well let's take our scenario one where we have two power cabs for our wet and we have a real guitar amp Real guitar head, real guitar speaker cabinet, which just is going to be our dry tone. Well, we could simply come in here, our guitar signal is coming through. We could come in here and go put a send block there, making sure that that send in our global settings is set as an instrument output. So the guitar amp is not seeing a line signal, but rather as an instrument signal. Now what this will do is our guitar signal will come in. It'll hit this block, which will send it out our physical send, which hits our guitar amp. It'll let the, the signal continue through, hit the model guitar amp and speaker cabinet effects, and we'd want to set these effects quite wet to get whatever wet effect we wanted, and we'd want them to be stereo. And then we could send that out to XLR, and it goes to our two power cabs, let's say, right? Wonderful. This seems like a far superior setup to this simply because, wow, I, I, I don't have to deal with all these paths and... and, and the drawback, a couple of them. I won't be able to do the recording thing I spoke about. I won't in any easy way be able to now say, well, I want to record my direct unless I use USB 7, but then I'd have to reamp that, right? Um, unless I fed the send outputs back into another audio interface and it just gets complicated. So if I, you know, for studio work, this wouldn't be the desired thing. Now, what's the other possibility? Well, the other possibility is maybe we don't have the sends available which would basically mean we can't use this. Maybe we're using a Strymon Timeline or Strymon Big Sky or an Eventide H9 or, or some other really um, sought after um, you know, multi-effects or specialty effects processor that we're using more as a loop. If we're using a Helix LT, well, we've got a little bit of a problem, don't we? Because we have basically one stereo send and return. So if we have something like an Eventide H9, which we want to run in stereo, that's going to use up all of our sends and returns if we want to use that for some of our wet signal. So I'm not saying anybody is using that or they aren't, but if they are, then that kind of discounts our ability to be able to do it this way. And then we'd have to maybe come back and use a, a, a method like this, which would then allow me to throw in, you know, if I did have a Strymon or whatever, I could put in a loop, uh, you know, uh, a, um, an effects loop uh, somewhere down here and then insert that pedal into where it needs to be, right? So lots of, lots of options, right? So that's a couple of the reasons why I chose to do it the way I did it, rather than just going with what seems like a much simpler way to do it. Now, let's say that we have the scenario where we don't have a real guitar amp and cabinet, but let's say we have that scenario where we have three power cabs. The left and right outside ones are gonna be our wet, 
and the center is going to be for our dry. Well, now we could just take our send here and simply move it right there. So now our guitar signal is being affected by our guitar amp. It's being affected by our guitar cab. At this point, just the dry guitar amp model and cab is being sent to our dry center FRFR or power cab or whatever we're using. And then we're gonna be able to still let it, that signal flow through and get the effects or the wet signal to go to our other two, okay? So just by sliding around this send, you know, there, that's gonna feed our real guitar amp and cab or this is gonna feed an FRFR where we need to utilize the guitar amp and speaker modeling for all of the FRFRs, if that makes sense. I hope I explained that right. And I hope it made sense why I would approach it. And you know what? Maybe I'm missing something again here, but, and there's probably another way to do it, you know? But these are just some of the ways I'm thinking. And I thought it would, it would warrant just talking about it so that folks who don't have need for the sends and returns for anything else or for the USB recording and whatnot, and they just want a really simple way to do it, this will work for them maybe in a much simpler fashion, allow them to dial it in easier. So I hope that that's clear. Now the other situation was when we're feeding the front of house with a fully speaker uh, cab modeled preset that we've dialed in, but we wanna monitor on stage with let's say maybe a little power amp and a real speaker cabinet, right? To get that amp in a room feel that so many folks talk about. Well, I came up with a solution to that. And uh, what I came up with was this, my normal little preset here, everything's flowing along. And all I did is I put my cab at the end. And I, I, if you wanna talk more about that, watch the video I did on that. I really go into detail about the effects of putting the cab at the end versus not. And I give some sound examples and whatnot too. But what I said is basically what we have here is we could have our signal come all the way through right to our speaker cab and sent out to XLR front of house. So the front of house guy has our patch, everything's fine. But what do we feed to our, our power amp and guitar cab on stage? That's the question. Well, what I did is I simply took a simple gain block and I created a split path, which then allowed me to send the signal which came right before the cab modeling. So I'm not gonna send that. I don't want that to go to my real speaker cabinet. It's a real speaker cabinet. It doesn't need help from an IR or a speaker model, right? So this would tap the sound before that got modeled by the speaker, send it out to our quarter inch output, which we would set as an instrument or line level, depending on what we're feeding. Maybe we're feeding a fat power cab with the speaker emulation on it. I don't know, then we'd want it to be line level, right? Depending on what our scenario is. Now, I had a lot of folks say, well, wait a second, why did you do that? You could have just simply done this, right? At that same point where I created a split and threw a gain block and out another way, I could have just put a send and we could have used our physical send output. In this case, I chose send one. Now, if these were stereo effects, I would have to come here and choose a stereo, which would eat up two cents, one and two, right? Depending on where we're sending things to, right? Um, if we were feeding two power amps and two speaker cabinets on stage, maybe unlikely, I don't know, depends. So many people have so many different scenarios, right? That it's hard to talk about these for everybody. But this is a great way to do it. The downfall of the way that I did it originally was that we used up our split path on our second path or path two, right? So we wouldn't be able to utilize that for anything else, maybe parallel effects or, or, or whatnot. So that was the drawback to that. And that's why I even mentioned that in the video. So now you lose your, your split. So, you know, somebody mentioned to me, well, yeah, just use a send. Of course you can, but again, maybe we have a Helix LT. Maybe we're using our sends already for external effects to put into, a, you know, our path through a loop, right? Maybe we have a stereo Eventide H9 that we, we use all the time. We use it religiously and our sends are used up. Well, that's going to discount us from the ability to do this, right? So this is wonderful. If you have the sends available, I think it would be preferred because like you said, we have that split uh, path on our path two still available to us, right? Whereas here we don't. But here, it gives me the ability to not have to use one of my sends. I can send it to a quarter inch output and set that appropriately. I hope that makes sense. I, I, I really do. Um, and again, you know, the, the beauty of this is we have so much flexibility on our Helix, right? We have all these outputs, depending on what we have, LT, a little bit less flexibility with the full Helix floor, tons of flexibility. Um, so 
it's a good problem to have, right? There's, it's always nice when there's more than one way to, to, to deal with a situation. And um, it's a hard thing to, to set up a video and say, here, do it this way. And then, you know, there's always somebody who says, well, yeah, but what about my situation? I want that split block for something else. You know, I want that split path for something else. And then you say, okay, well, use a send. And then somebody else, well, no, wait, I, my sends are taken up, you know? So there is a limit to what we can do also, um, but it's nice to have the options. And that's why I thought after the comments I got, I thought those were excellent comments. I really appreciate people throwing that stuff out there because it, it gave me the idea here to say, you know what? Let's do a video about that and let's talk about the alternate ways of using these sins. And hopefully that can help somebody kind of just spark a new way of thinking about uh, maybe simplifying a preset they have or maybe expanding a preset they have or, or just using it in a way they wouldn't have thought of otherwise. But do keep in mind the global settings in the Helix um, for your ins and outs, so your sins and whatnot. You can either set them to instruments or line level and you'd want to have that appropriately set so we're getting the right signal to whatever we're feeding. Again, something like the power cab wants to accept a line level, so we'd want to make sure whatever output is being sent to it is set to line level, okay? Really wonderful of the Helix folks to give us the ability to set them as either line or instrument. So it very opens up the flexibility even more, so. I hope that was helpful guys. Thank you guys so much for the comments and that's what was the catalyst for me actually doing this video and I really hope this can be a helpful video and I hope it did help some folks. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Please, if there's anything that I've missed or forgotten here, please leave me the comment and I'll be happy to, to in, input in another video or chat about it or, uh, or just discuss it. So it's awesome. I love the communities we have with the gear page, uh, Facebook, YouTube comments. It's really awesome to interact with everybody and come up with so many great ideas. And I think it just makes it better for all of us in the end because we all get so much more out of our, uh, our units, right? So, all right. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. I really appreciate the support. Like the video and share it if you don't mind. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll be back with some more content real soon. Ciao for now.